Hey guys, so um, let's say you have a property that you're thinking about either renting out to someone else or selling. Um, right now, the market is such that I think selling, I mean, I'm holding on to, to my property. I don't want to sell because I want to wait and see what happens with Amazon and all of that good stuff going on. So if you want to rent out your place and you are emotionally ready to have someone else living in the house you own, this video is about what to expect in terms of costs associated with renting the house. So let's assume you have mortgage and you're paying your taxes and all of that doesn't change. You um, have the first thing that you have to do is get your house ready. Because if you want a good tenant who has a good credit history, good background, good history of uh, renting from someone else, they know that the landlords are going to fight for them well, fight for them, they will take uh, a good tenant in a heartbeat. So they expect a clean house with fresh paint, uh, clean carpets, everything functional, all light bulbs working, everything in, in good working order. So make sure you have everything done before tenant comes in and starts saying, well, this doesn't work or that doesn't work, uh, because you want a good tenant in the first place. Um, so the first thing you, the second thing you want to decide is whether to hire an agent and pay um, the fee and uh, have them find you a good tenant or if you want to do it on your own. If you want to hire an agent, the company, the realty charges one month's rent usually. So that's the fee uh, that you should expect to pay. Now, you can do it on your own. I mean, you, you totally can do it. If you have the time to show the house, if you have the ability to meet with people and talk to them, and you do have access to several services that will check the background and credit history of the potential tenants after they uh, submit their, their application, and I can totally share you the one that I'm using for many, many years. Just let me know. Uh, so you can totally do it. And I also can show you which sites I am using to post the ads for uh, when I look for my tenants. Because even though I'm a realtor, I, I kind of, um, I think that I can totally do it on my own and I don't really hire anybody else or my brokerage because I don't want to pay um, if I don't have to. And I'm sure you're the same way. So um, you can totally do it. Let me know if you want the uh, sources that I'm using uh, to find good tenants. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the second part you need to think about. The third part is whether you want to hire a property management company or not. Because property management companies take the headache of collecting your rent monthly. Uh, they coordinate all the repairs. Although you do have to pay for repairs yourself, but they coordinate with the tenant. They make sure that you don't pay for something you don't have to pay for. Because sometimes if tenant breaks something, the property management companies are very good at catching that. And uh, they will not. But, um, basically, they will just be on the tenant's back for that repair. They're not going to charge you for something that the tenant caused. If you don't have that uh, shield, uh, sometimes you have to kind of cough up the, 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 the uh, money to pay for something that may or may not have been b uh, broken by the tenant. Um, they do charge anywhere from 8 to 10% of monthly rent every month. So basically they collect rent, they, they, they deduct their fee, and then they send the rest to your account. Um, again, I have a couple of property management companies that I know. Uh, I do not work with them because I manage my, my own properties, uh, but I can totally recommend you someone really good. The, so the next one you have to think about is you have to budget for any... Uh, repairs that may be need may be needed throughout the uh, renting your house. What I do to kind of safeguard myself from big ticket items is I have a home warranty, and I pay uh, something about six hundred dollars for mine per year, and I div divide it by twelve and I add it to my um, rent. Sometimes it works, others it doesn't. It depends on the market. So it's totally worth it. It is, I think, tax deductible. Con consult with your tax advisor. Um, but it's totally worth it because what happens is if something breaks, I have a peace of mind that the warranty uh, contractor will come out and fix it. If it's not fixable, they will replace it. 
um, for one deductible. So let's say your fridge broke, which happened to me several times. The, the fridge breaks. I pay $75 deductible, and however many times the contractor needs to come out, that $75 deduct deductible covers it. So I had, I had a, a couple of uh, instances where a contractor came out, figured that there is a part that needs to be ordered, left, ordered the part, came back with the part, installed it, and um, that was two visits, and I didn't have to worry about anything. I just gave the phone number for the contractors and tenants to each other. They coordinated between themselves. I don't even, in the end, I just asked my tenant, is it fixed? They said, yes, I'm done. That's it. That's good. Uh, so consider that. If you, There are many, many, many home warranty companies out there that you can choose from. I can totally give you the one I use. Um, it's actually, it's no secret. It's American Home Shield, and I love them. Uh, but you can find uh, your own. It, it's um, The main thing is to have something in place to, to kind of have that peace of mind that if something big breaks, you don't have to come up, cuff up with thousands of dollars to replace or repair. Let's say AC or heating or something. And when you show houses to uh, potential tenants, when you tell them you have a warranty on it, it helps because they do know that that makes repairs more timely and uh, you're not you know sometimes landlords because they don't have the money to pay for repairs may sit on something broken for a while and it doesn't it's not good for tenants either so um, totally worth it uh, another expense you have to think about and and possibly do is adding your coverage to your insurance um, add your landlord coverage that will protect you from any claims from your tenant should anything god forbid happen to your house Let, for example i had a client whose house ended up having um mold behind the kitchen wall and it it was not something she did it was something that the condo um you know didn't do or, or ha something happened they had to demolish the whole kitchen they found that mold the tenant could not live in that unit for a couple of months the tenant went after the landlord because tenant didn't have renter's insurance which was a big no-no so anyway um that landlord coverage protects you from claims like that so if, th through no fault of yours there might be something that tenant may go for you after you so definitely call your insurance company and tell them to add landlord coverage and of course every lease in virginia requires tenant to have uh, renter's insurance but it doesn't mean that they will have it uh, by default. Definitely require confirmation that they have renter's coverage and have a copy of it and have you as an additional uh, insured on that uh, policy. So, uh, of course, your condo fees, HOA fees are the same. You don't, you don't uh, ask your tenant to pay for those um, and you pay those. So that's another cost of um, your property. And make sure you understand that when you sign that lease, your tenant gets leasehold on your property. So anything that you have, pool access, uh, parking, anything that you have access to regarding this property transfers to your tenant for the time of the lease, okay? So yes, you pay your HOA and condo fee, but your tenant pays you rent. So they do get to use all those amenities. So be aware of that and make sure you understand that. Um, and that's it, pretty much. You collect your rent, you pay whatever mortgage payment you have, um, you get your money sitting in the account a little bit to kind of have that cushion for just in case. And um, hopefully that ends up being a profitable enterprise for you. The main thing to keep in mind is that somebody else is paying your mortgage. Even if they don't cover the whole amount of your expenses, you still get somebody else paying bulk of your mortgage. That's awesome thing, I think, because in the end, you're going to end up with a house fully paid off by someone else. So no matter what you think about rental market, I think buying a rental property is a smart thing to do, especially if you already have some money sitting in the market, in the uh, stock market. But anyway, that's, that's your decision. I'm just saying, if you do want to be a landlord, those are the expenses you should be expecting to make. And by no means, please don't consider this rental property as your own property. They will mess it up. They will make it dirty. They will break stuff. Don't take it too close to heart. It's, it's something that brings you money. If something needs to be repaired, it's just the money. Don't think of that house as your house because it's not going to be your house. Tenants never look after a house they don't own, okay? So don't take it too uh, uh, emotionally. It's all good. 
So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to talk to you uh, more about this stuff. But I hope you like this video. If you do, please comment and like below. Bye.